we're back again with another video for week one of the community module for Design for Learning. This is Arden Kirkland. Let's step back a minute here to think about motivation for participating in any of these related communities, from class out to personal learning network. Remember when Dr. Marilyn Arnone discussed the ARC model in the orientation module from Desi and Ryan's self-determination theory? The three key features of the ARC model she discussed all affect our motivation to participate at any given time. Now, in the foundation module, Marilyn also shared the ARCs model, very similar, uh, from John Keller. These four features, again, are very similar and also strongly affect motivation. Now, I find both these models to be very helpful, and I kind of go back and forth between them. When I think about my own motivation in a few different online communities, I've seen it evolve from curiosity to a more urgent need to learn something in particular. Then after I've been in a community longer, I feel that I want to contribute to reciprocate for what I've learned. And this grows into a greater generosity, responding to the generosity of others in sharing their contributions. I can definitely see a connection between this evolution of my own involvement and the increase in all factors of the ARC model as I grow more comfortable in a community. The longer I'm there, the more I feel related, and the more I learn, the greater my sense of both competence and autonomy, to the point that I'm as comfortable contributing as I am learning from the contributions of others. Now, on the other side, my personal barriers to participation are often heavily on the side of the competence or confidence parts from those two models. Of course, there's always the lack of time. How many times have you wanted to respond to someone's post, but you got busy and never got back to it? That's an issue for all of us. But even more so, I think I personally am held back by a lack of confidence. I feel like others can say things better than I can, or that they know more about it all than I do. But as a result, issues don't get raised that might be of value to the whole community. So it's important to nurture confidence and trust so that the conversation can emerge. Different approaches to discussions can help with these motivations or barriers. In many different instructional settings, whether it's face-to-face -face or in a forum or on Twitter, it's easy to fall into a traditional discussion model of an instructor sharing a prompt to which only a few people respond. But this model really depends on students who are both motivated and somewhat outgoing, and therefore can be hard to maintain even if people do participate at first. As time passes, whether it's across an hour of short-term instruction or a month of a longer-term activity, you're going to need to step up your game. Take a look at two different links under the additional resources at the end of this lesson, which have some ideas for more creative approaches to discussions. Mostly they're oriented toward a face-to-face -face setting, but I think there's a lot of potential to transfer these to different online platforms. So, as a part of your partner activity for this week, I want you to think creatively about some new ideas for alternative kinds of discussions online.